My name is Kayla Farrell Smith, um, Klamath Modoc, um, and I'm here in Modoc Point Studio in Chilliquin, Oregon. What's driving me in the studio right now is um, the land. Um, I'm really focused on the um, the land back series of, of paintings, and um, yeah, I mean it's it, there's there's a lot surrounding that as I've been um, kind of a front lines um, activist, you know, stopping a pipeline as well as we're fighting the water wars down here in Klamath County. I've actually been liter literally harvesting the earth and using these wild pigments in my um, Land Back series paintings. And I guess also my connection, I, my practice is really, really connected with my father's life and his story, um, the late Alfred Leo Smith, who um, walked on to his journey in 2014. And Al was born in 1919 and down here in Modoc Point, but he was taken um, from his family, his mother and his grandparents, when he was really young, I think around seven years old, uh, and taken and put into the board, Indian boarding school system. I'm the youngest daughter of Al Smith's um, nine children. Um, so um, I'm the first of his children that weren't born down here or aren't from here to kind of relocate and start building relationships within my community. And so a lot of my process in the last three years is kind of is healing uh, my father's that experience, that trauma in our in our ancestral line. And when I say healing, you know, it, um, it's a there was it's, there's rough history down here in Chiliquin. Um, our tribe, the Klamath tribes, was terminated in 1954 uh, and that was the land grab. So we don't have a land base that was you know, the federal government taking our, our land, whether, and that's all of this ponderosa pine forests, um, water, our connection with water. We were reinstated though as a tribe in, I believe restoration happened in 1986. And so we are federally, federally recognized as a tribe, and, but we don't have a land base. So that's kind of when we say land back as indigenous people, as native people, like we mean it, like we want our land back. <laughs> Um, and that's, and we want control of our lands because um, we're dealing with these wildfires, we're dealing with water wars and, it, you know, indigenous control, indigenous led um, movements are, you know, are popping up all across um, Turtle Island, which is, you know, all of the Americas. So that's sort of where I see it as, as a bigger community, um, as indigenous people coming together to, um, to help take care of our, to take care of our land and therefore the next generations. So we talk about doing this work for the next seven generations. So how, how we walk and how we act on this earth, you know, we do that so that there, that this will all be here for the future generations. All of my work is really kind of around um, resource extraction, as well as my own personal connection with the land and with um, healing and reconnecting with, with my ancestral homelands. So with that, um, I have um, this earth that I've harvested from, from um, where the lithium is. So it's this gray color. So I'm really kind of focusing in on this white and gray. I've also been collecting detritus on the land. So like uh, bullets, shot up cans, um, different kind of metal machinery and using those as stencils in my work. So that's um, kind of the bright colors and layers is one of the, one of the, um, the layers of my work. And then I'll kind of go in with some of the wild pigments, mainly this white chalk that I've been harvesting and kind of mixing that up with acrylics and then adding in kind of the wild pigments onto the layers of my work. I use the white paint kind of as a form of note taking as well as a form of erasure. Um, and so I kind of talk about the white paint in my, in my work as a reflection of white supremacy, but also a reflection of the sublime. I'll start with just Kind of gray gesso marks and then i'll put in the um the land back stencils and then i'll bring in the uh, um, wild pigment harvest layers and then then pieces start to really kind of emerge as individual compositions and then i'll focus in on on you know kind of completion of of a of a, of a piece so one of the pieces that i'm really excited about is ca called off the ground uh, and it's a large large piece it's 60 inches by 48 inches all of this work really is in response to kind of the trauma around wildfires and living and existing through wildfire seasons um, as a wilderness first responder. And so uh, my birthday last summer, I was at the lava beds um, in um, uh, the Modoc National Forest up at Medicine Lake, 
which is a really sacred and special place to um, our people. And when I was there, it's a beautiful beach, a beautiful lake, and I was swimming and all of a sudden we saw the black skies come through and it was um, the thunderstorms were rolling through in the middle of the summer and um, lightning was, was starting fires kind of all across Modoc National Forest. So me and my partner and my dog Pele, we had to evacuate and leave. So we made it out of Modoc, uh, Modoc National Forest and the lava beds, but we were, I was witnessing this huge um, thunder, thunderbird, thunder storm, and I kind of saw just this black cloud and kind of some a figure within it. And so that painting is, is kind of my interpretation of, of that specific moment and experience. Um, and so there is a thunder or a, a thunderbird um, petroglyph image in that painting. And all of this work, you know, it's kind of like abstract landscapes. So it's kind of like looking down aerial, at least in my mind, and I'll use some shapes, like just a basic triangle kind of represents a mountain for me. For me personally, as an environmental activist, um, it's been hard, you know, it's been hard work. I've been talking about this climate chaos and our impact on the on the on the world for a really long time. Um, and it's been a trick to merge the activism with the art and the studio art practice, but that's really been my goal is to figure out how to do that. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now with um, the work in my studio.